the Lord granted him a stern struggle, that he might know that wisdom is mightier than all else. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist, we gather to commemorate the memorial today of St. Polycarp, Bishop and Martyr, asking for his intercession, that we in our own lives might follow his example and always hear the voice of God and be willing to surrender and lay down our lives for God. As we gather this morning, let us first and foremost take a moment to acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God of all creation, who were pleased to give the bishop St. Polycarp a place in the company of the martyrs, grant through his intercession that sharing with him in the chalice of Christ, we may rise through the Holy Spirit to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and they do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but shall do my will achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. From all their distress, God rescues the just. All their distress, God rescues the just. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. From all their distress, God rescues the just. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard and from all his distress, he saved him. From all their distress, God rescues the just. The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. From all their distress, God rescues the just. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them. And from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. From all their distress, God rescues the just. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, In praying do not babble like the pagans, who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive men their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this morning's gospel hits at the core of one of the marks of the Lenten season, prayer. And in a very special way, in a particular way, this morning's gospel teaches us how to pray. I always find it very interesting that, you know, the, the disciples go up to Jesus and they want to learn how to pray. And so they actually say to Jesus, teach us how to pray. And Jesus says to them, don't go look for all these fancy words. Don't go try to find all these fancy things to say. And basically what Jesus says to the disciples is pray to your father with your heart. Oftentimes, people will come up to me and say, father, can you pray for me? And I always say, I will pray for you only if you pray for me. And then people will say, Father, but it's because you're closer to God. And I say, well, I don't know about that. Because as we so beautifully hear in the gospel just proclaim, God knows what's in our hearts. God knows what we need even before we know that we need it. And our prayer, my dear friends, is simply for us an opportunity to converse with God, to get to know God a little bit better, and allow God to get to know us. It's our opportunity to be able to enter in a more deeper relationship with God. And that's what prayer is all about. It's an opportunity for encounter. Sometimes in our prayer lives or in our prayer times, we might say to ourselves, I don't know what to say. And that's okay. Because many times prayer, my dear friends, does not require us to speak. But to enter into a silence with God. It's being present with God. When people ask me, what's the best prayer that they can do? I always say the Our Father because that's what Jesus says. But then I use a second one. And the second one can be found in the Psalms. And there's that beautiful Psalm where the psalmist using God's voice says, be still and know that I am God. And perhaps, my dear brothers and sisters, that can be our best prayer to be still and know that he is God. Simply to be in the presence of him who has created us, of him who has loved us, 
and continues to love us. As we celebrate this Lenten season, the invitation is for us in the midst of our busy lives, in the midst of everything going on, that we become still and know that he is God and he is with us. I think that perhaps might be the hardest temptation we can have during this Lenten season. Because so often times it's hard to be still. Even just for a few brief minutes, we get antsy. And we struggle with the silence. We need noise. Maybe during this Lent, every day we could take just a few brief minutes to be still, to be silent, to be in the presence of our God. as we so beautifully heard last Ash Wednesday, to go and be alone in our room. To go and to be alone with God. As we gather here today, my dear brothers and sisters, let us open our hearts and our lives to enter into this beautiful mystery of God's love, to enter more profoundly into this Lenten season, which for us is an opportunity to be aware of God's presence, to be aware of the God who has called us, to enter into silence and to know that he is God. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you. Let us sit and be silent and still in the presence of God. I know it's hard. My dear brothers and sisters, with humble hearts, we bring our prayers before the Lord. For all members of the church, may the power of God's word embolden them or embolden us in bearing abundant fruit. Let us pray to the Lord. For civic leaders, may the word of the Lord be the water that makes their labors fruitful and just. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who struggle with their prayer life, may they be comfor comforted in the knowledge that God hears their distress and know what they need before they ask. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish community, may God transform our lives into witnesses of his goodness, truth, and beauty. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, in the peace of Christ, especially for the eternal repose of Areli, Matanane, and Jose and Encarnacion Manolo, Manolo, for whom this Mass is offered. May they and all the faithful departed one day rise with him to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord for all those who are struggling on this day, for those who are suffering from various illnesses, struggles, and challenges in their lives. Let us also pray for those people who have entrusted their prayers to us and for our own petitions, which we hold in the silence of our hearts. For these, let us pray to the Lord. 
good and gracious God, accept these prayers and answer them according to your holy will. For we offer them all through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Hey, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray. And by your grace, may we be set afire with the flame of your love, through which St. Polycarp overcame every bodily torment through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, who for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfilled when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he set the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice of blessing in his hand, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue, who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of our mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress to await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me, says the Lord.
Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which wait which made your blessed martyr, St. Colipart, faithful in your service and victorious in suffering through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May your faithful be strengthened, O God, by your blessing. In grief may you, you be their consolation, in tribulation their power to endure, and in pearl their protection, through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And now we turn to our Blessed Mother, asking for...